Bought. I bought these about six months ago and uh, they've just been sitting on the shelf so I just decided to uh, pull them out, strip them, clean them up and service them. Check the calibration, uh, take it down to uh, possibly for a 2.1 Pinto or a Lotus or a Cosworth and uh, put them back up for sale. I just thought I'd do a live stream showing how I, I strip carburetors up. Riveting footage. So, thanks for watching guys. I'm just gonna get my little uh, little uh, it's like a punching tool and you can adjust the, the spring tension on it so I use this to get the float pin up helps sometimes if you haven't got one of these a gentle uh, small hammer and a little small thin drill or something like that will help you get it started. You've got to be gentle because a lot of times um, people are a bit heavy handed here and they break them.
in. Here's the flow of the needle bolt. Seat. Like the hub regulator that goes in there, just with the tip, and uh, regulates the fuel flow into the car. Top cover gasket. And that's the choke uh, mechanism and the jet cover assembly. Separating all the steel in there, aluminium, and other bits. Steel is going to be bead blasted, zinc plated, etc. etc. Now, to take this little bugger off, the choke mechanism with an 8mm socket, 16mm, I think, for that top. I should have done this while it was on the carburetor. Just keep you an eye on uh, the fulcrum pin tower in case it's broken. Um, do you know what? I'm not going to use that. I'm going to use the fuel. It's just a punch. Get it round about on it. Get it by left hand side. Out comes the needle valve assembly with washer. These are going to be replaced. So. Uh, okay. Out comes the gasket. Another uh, jet cover. Check up a gasket, check up the screws, chuck. Mm. I think I'm going to have to lock these in the vise. Okay, we've got a balance lever here. Need to watch out we don't bend the spindle trying to remove the balance lever so I'm going to get it to its full stop so it's basically helping me no nope, that won't work that way I'm letting it sit on its uh, idling full full throttle stop position and that's going to help me undo the nut without bending the spindle nut Tab washer, balance lever, and then you've got a little spacer washer in there as well that you need to keep an eye out for. Okay, 
And then you've got your bearing. We'll knock that out in a bit. <clears throat> Do the other side while we're at it. Now the other side is going to be a bit difficult. So what you've got here is you've got a big penny washer. The big penny washer has got a couple of flats on it. So you can put a wrench on there to help you undo that nut without damaging anything. So let me get my wrench. So that's the wrench. Okay, so kind of get the wrench on that big washer. Nice and snug. Alright, so that's basically holding that. And then I might need to come in with my socket. Yeah. Socket. on it Not. The locking washer. And the penny washer in knots and pliers. Get some nice pliers. should help you um, get it off its okay can I use a different method than that I'm gonna use a blade Not having any success with that, so I'll come back to it afterwards. Remember the spaces that sit uh, adjacent to the bearing. If you don't put those in, you're going to jam your troll. Someone's put a, what looks like a, a plastic nut on this. Nuts. Mm. Look at that. That's a plastic nut. It's very odd. It's a bit of an unusual looking washer as well. Um, I think it's not, uh, it doesn't belong here basically. 
probably does, but it's uh, a, bit, a bit weird. Not much left of these big washers. I'll deal with them in a bit. I'm going to take my throttle screw, throttle stop screw off. That's for idle adjustment. It's got a spring on it. Now I'm going to take my idle mixer screw off. And this one does come with a, a rubber. Rubber seal and a steel gasket, um, a steel washer. So make sure you replace these. The order is uh, the rubber seal goes first, then the steel washer, then the spring, and then your mixture screw. guys please can you hit the thumbs up thanks Andy glad you got your carb running nicely Mr. Hooked on Classics video aimed for people that want to uh, do this on their carburetors and you might find one or two useful tips from the way I do it. Okay, so I'm going to take the main jet assemblies out. Alright, that's the main jet assembly. The bottom part is the jet, right, the main jet. Now I'm going to put this bad boy. So, that's the main jet. The middle part is the emulsioning tube, and the top part is the air corrector. These are 48 DHLAs, they're uh, the creme de la creme of uh, well, this range of carburetors. Performance 70s carburetors, 70s, 80s maybe? Yeah. I'm going to take the idle jet off. Also involves air emulsion and correction. And that's got a little rubber seal on it. You might find something like this helpful to get the rubber seals off because they're in a groove.
puoleksi. Just separating the jet from the body so I can when I ultrasonically clean them uh, they get really nice and clean and it gets everywhere. These are the pump weights, so it's where the pump weight you hold in there, you get a little screw, and then you get um, the brass weight and the little ball bearing. So careful with those. Same with that one. And then you've got your starter jet, which is not very useful. <coughs> A lot of people uh, disregard the cold start in these carburetors. I'm still taking it out though. Again, to get really, it's a bit of corrosion here on the brass. Possibly from um, water separation or water absorption from the fuel. Um, the Martian tubes don't have it, but these have it probably because they've been there since the carbs were made years ago. So, okie koki. I just yeah, we've seen that's the carburetor inside. Dirt just fell out. <clears throat> now taking out the pump jet, one for each barrel. All right, comes as a little assembly like that. Hand clips from the holder like that. And you've got your little washer. That's just the holder. Okay. That's your jet. Also got a little rubber seal on it. So remove that. Rubbers have got an aluminium seal there. Yeah, these have got a rubber. So pump jet goes in for ultrasonic cleaning. Next pump jet coming out. Separation. This has still got fuel in it. Yeah, it's still got a bit of fuel in it. it smells sweet. Wash it. There's your wash there. Last pump weight. Start again. These are cut. These carburetors are actually in pretty good condition. To be fair. Okay, okay, pump jet.
What's that saying? Um, every five minute job is one slip of being a three day nightmare. Well, that, that comes when, it, when you're unscrewing these screws. The brass and aluminium and if you burr one then obviously you have to take it to the machine shop to have it uh, removed so <sighs> now I need to take these progression screws out without doing exactly what I just said so put a bit of weight on it oh, no it's not happening it's gonna to have to go in the vise. A vise to take the penny washer out. And a vise to unscrew the progression uh, plugs. Okay, can we can we? Nice. Put these in there as a bypass. A bypass screws. Choppy little pointy bit. Take the throttle return spring off. Okay, there we are. Throttle to the punch me. Next, I'm going to take the pump rod off. Right now, this you need a very small spanner, something like a six maybe, or a, it's, yeah, it is, it's a six. But these snap very easy, so I suggest you use two sixes if you can, uh, or a six spanner and a six socket. I'm going to get another. I'm going to get the six socket. It's my little socket set there. So we want number six. It should be well, six and a half. No, they do them in halves. There you go, that's our six mil socket. So we're going to get our six mil socket ready to unscrew. Hold that ready for the spanner. There we go. As soon as it's uh, loose, then danger is going to come. Now, it's good to take a note of how many threads are protruding uh, from the rod past the nut. So you can come back to, if you don't know where you want to set it, that affects the pump stroke. So if you're taking these apart guys, maybe take a note of how many threads or measure it, how many millimeters the rod is protruding from the nut. So you know when to, when to put it back. I would have liked to have put these carburetors on our Pinto for Kate. But um, I think the 45s that are on it are big enough. So I'm going to put these up for sale. Okay, so the pump nut um, will be adjusting nut and the pump nut are off. So now I can proceed to take the pump diaphragm off. These are all going to be replaced, guys. All right, so the pump cover is coming off. The pump diaphragm, which is a two layer gasket thing. All right. So that goes into that hole like that. This is going to be part of the new service kit we're going to use. And there's a spring there. Okay, so make sure you are aware this doesn't fling off somewhere. So that's the pump diaphragm spring. And then you've got the pump body. The 
rods with those. Some of these rods vary, all right? This has got a single spring on it. This is the pump rod, right? Uh, this has got a single spring. Some have two springs, two smaller springs. So again, take note of that. And also there's a little washer. Oh, I didn't have this time. So the washer hasn't come off, but everything else has. These are the pump cover screws. There. There's a little washer at the, at the bottom of the pump rod, which is very losable. Come on, you little sucker. I won't be getting it now, so back to where we were. Okay, so this pump body can be a bit of a sucker to remove. Sometimes they've got little uh, lugs on them where you can uh, get a bit of leverage on. I'm gonna get my, uh, my mallet. <coughs> this whole little mallet, give it a couple of taps. Shock it off. Come on, you little sod. I'm going to roll myself a cigarette before I end up pelting one of these carburetors across the room. Uh, okay, light up. You're not missing much, Ron. Don't worry about it, man. That little sword isn't coming out. Need to take these trumpets off next. For that, we need our little trusty 10 mil. Okay. This is how professional it gets here. It has to go. Trumpet retaining that. Loose washer. Got another 400 of these to do. Take the trumpets out. It's a nice looking trumpet. They match the rest of the carburetor nicely. Okay. 
Okay, so let's undo that. Right, that's one of our trumpets. These help the air, the airstream airflow into the choke on the carburetor. So having trumpets is a good idea for uh, performance, airflow, etc. Next thing is the auxiliary venturi. This little 11 mil nut there with a slotted head on it. And you should tighten these up a lot, guys, because otherwise you'll distort the auxiliary venturi. That's why they've got the locking nuts on them. That's the auxiliary venturi. Uh, that's from the main jet. Feeds the, the fuel straight into the airstream, or well, the airstream draws the fuel out of it. So that's your auxiliary venturi, and then this looks like it's got pretty big chokes. So it would have been fitted possibly on a motor that was quite high revving. Now, to take these little bad boys out, I've got a securing. This is a securing screw for the choke. I've got some noisy buggers out there with scooters. Okay, so did this just have a wash of it? Okay, no it didn't. Right, this is to secure the choke, so the choke stays firm in place. That's the thing that causes the Bernoulli effect, I believe. Sudden change in, in air pressure uh, causes vacuum somewhere else, blah, blah, blah. And you get, yeah, it's a size 40, 41, I think. 41. Yeah. Is that the big choke you've got? 48? I don't know what the biggest choke size is you can go on these parts, but it looks pretty big to me. It looks nice. Um, okay, let's take another one up as well. We've got 11 mil spanner, flat head screwdriver, slotted jobby. Under that, separate it, put it in with the rest of the steel bits. If you guys are doing this for the first time, it might help if you take photos as you're stripping the carburetors. Uh, that will help you when you come to rebuilding. Taking photos. I've done these a few times, so I'm all right with that. Auxiliary venturi. Choke. Okie dokie. So now we've got the pump rod. Let's slip the pump rod off. All right. So undo this screw. It's got like a, a 
down screw, slotted screw. Looks a bit like that. That kind of thing still. And then get like a wooden hammer and just back it off a little bit. Pass the screw and open the throttle. And then you'll be able to pull it off like that. Alright. That's uh that just needs ultrasonic cleaning and stuff. So I'll put that there. Oh yeah, there's the little washer I was on about as well. Where the spring sits onto. Slip that off in there. That can go there. So now we've just got the throttle valves. Um Italian precision machining. Delorto are known as master casters, so they cast beautifully. There's a little bit of flashing on a couple of parts inwards of the carburetor, but anywhere on the outside, it just looks very, very good quality. Well, I'm going to give these um, progression hole covers another go. If not, strong okay so that's the brass progression hole cover and we've got three progression holes my right, guys you're probably not going to see it in a million miles but the progression holes are in there you can also gain access to them to look at them and count them from the bore if you open the bore up these are three progression hole uh, performance uh, old school classic performance carburetors other progression hole screw that's very good now this penny washer jobby see I don't really want to stick a screwdriver through there because I don't want to score the aluminium but it might be it's the only option so let's give this a go I'll do it gently see if it if it responds I think I'm going to have to wait until I've removed the throttle valves and then give it a bit more room. Um, I'm going to take the throttle valves off now. Now these have been, you can see the back, alright, if I turn the throttle the other way you see these have been uh, punched or flared. So to take these screws off, you probably be a wise idea to grind these off fully so you can take the screw off you don't want to put a lot of weight on this again damage the spindle oh man these fucking scooters so let's get my little file on the go and see what we can do Careful you don't uh, file anything else other than the little screw. this file for about uh, uh, coming up for 20 years now but my uncle probably had it for years before so it's not quite as uh, aggressive as you, you might like sometimes Thank <laughs> you. 
You need to get a really well-fitting screwdriver on these. Not that one. Not that one. Oh, this one. The other thing is a little gentle tap to get the screwdriver in the slot. Nice and snug. Let's give it a a little feel and see what happens. Okay, that's the first little sort of wow screw. Okay. Let's do the same. Okay. Got one screw. Now we can remove our butterfly broken wire picks. These are specially machined, guys, so uh, they're machined to angles so they can. Uh, seal the ball okay so that's one so we're going to do the other so i can take the spindle out uh, let me just get through these Let's give these a crack. So again, a nice slotted screwdriver that's a good fit. Tap it home so it goes as a snug fit. Oh, butterfly throttle valve. 
which is normally uh, sort of light yellow in colour. It's got a bit of a backfiring going on in all sorts. Okey pokey. I'll try and get rid of the swarf because you want to slide the you want to slide the um, the spindle out with minimal uh, damage on its guide. <laughs> So we've got a bit of that penny thing here. I've not done this before, right? but this penny washy jobby here. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna tap the spindle this side to force it that side, that way. So it's gonna push this bearing out and hopefully I'll be able to retrieve this washer. Uh, so let's have a go at that, see how it goes. Got a copper ended hammer guys, all right and uh, lots but small taps. And if nothing happens, try the other way. I hear something happening. Some people might have other ways of getting these out. This is how I've I used to hit them hard to get them out in one shot, but then mangle the, the spindle, so. and get this pump housing out. So, 
we got to do is have a watch that affects it. Maybe I'm going to the general. gasket and this might be a pump exhaust valve that's the sort of um, let me see if it's got a number on it just look through here yeah that looks like a yeah it's a bleed back valve I think you can if these are numbered This isn't a way to, um, when you're squirting fuel, that when it's creating the pump action in the car, it's so it doesn't push it back into the float ball and through the jet. So it's got a, uh, yeah, okay. so that's just the casting, that's got a rubber O seal on it. Oh, I mean, what's it nice to see? Back on that. Okay, so the pump housing is out. So we're just left with the stubborn spindle. Having this freaking penny washer here that I haven't took off isn't the best of things, is it? Even though I've been doing it that way. But... See if I can remove this penny washer. What do you mean? Space under it. I'm nearly there, guys. Thanks for watching if you watched all this way. So, we're literally now we're just left with our spindle. That's the one I cooked. It's only the uh, the rubber seal. I'm going to replace those anyway. So. We've got action, guys. Either the bend, either the spindle's bending, or the spindle's coming out. Ooh. 
must have liked this uh, Granville carb cleaner. There we go. Uh, yeah. Come on, baby. Come on. I usually do this on the bikes. Toss your spindle, uh, complete up against the light just to make sure I didn't bend it. And it doesn't look too bad, I don't think. Look good. I'm just gonna have to take this freaking spindle off. I'm gonna close the jaws of the vise, leave about a seven, eight mil gap, slot it through so the bearing is sitting on the vise. And then that uh, gets the bearing out. You know what? I'm gonna do it right now. Screw it. I'm gonna show you the magic as it happens. Comprende. There we go. Separation. Bearing that is a renewable card. We'll no, I mean we'll, we'll replace it. There's our spindle. Okay. Now this needs Gavcon phosphate coat. This chemical blackie again. My, you see, because I hit it with a copper hammer on the sides, it's very possible that it doesn't even need its threads cleaned. Yeah, there you go. You see. It's a good thing about having one of these handy guys because the brass, co the copper gives way before any steel. So that's good. So that need chemical blacking. We can do that in house. These things here will need uh, boot blasting, uh, then um, rinsed in possibly brake cleaner, dried, and then Gavcon zinc plate. Um, these parts need ultrasonic cleaning. These are all the brass parts. Um, things like that we'll get. That could go with just a big brush and then in the bead blasting cabinet to bead blast that. Same with the fuel unions. This little sucker here is gonna be ultrasonically cleaned because it's steel and aluminium. And if the steel's got any coating left on it, I don't want to remove it. And these are all the perishable parts here, guys. The floats will be checked, uh, dipped in water, just to make sure they're not leaking. And they will go back on again. I'm gonna undo the chokes now, to the, and then bead blast top cover. This, I'm gonna need to separate it, because that's got a steel lever, in fact, this might just do with ultrasonic cleaning if the aluminium comes up nice because this zinc is still very nicely on the lever so that might just do as it is and that's it so that's your bare carburetor that will need bead blasting then blowing through then ultrasonically cleaning uh, drying out a bit of WD-40 and oh I need to pop that bearing out don't I Chaps, if you're going to be doing these jobs, it's handy to get a selection of rods, different sized rods. And I've got a few sized rods here. And what you do is get a little rod, feed it through as if it's the spindle, and that's where it gets onto the other um, bearing. Make sure it's lined up, and then give it a clap. 
rest of the rod pulled out the other bearing, which I can't remove. To remove it, get your little, uh, that's, it. that's the old bearing, that's the rod. These are very handy. I bought a selection of these a few years ago. Some of them are bent, some of them are burnt, uh, but they're useful. Well, I'll probably do a quick uh, catch up with you, Rusty Lovers, uh, when we've built them, and or when we're building them, so you can appreciate the difference. I'll carry on with this one, finish it off, and that's it. So, if you've got any, if you're watching this in 2030, and you've got any questions or want any help with rebuilding your Delortos or calibrating them or any parts. Uh, Comment below and uh, someone will get back to you. <laughs> Alright, guys. Uh, yeah, it would be nice to have a live chat, guys, because I'd, I'd like to hear you guys chatting, actually. Um, anyway, Okie okay, Coke. Someone had a roast Cornish hen. Well, Mr. Ron Talbot had it. Yeah. Yeah, nice Mark 1 behind you, just finished watching a video on it. Cannot wait to get mine back on the road. Yes, mate, he took me for a drive in that today, and he scared the life out of me. Well, not really, I love it, but he, he put the, fl the foot down, and I wished I took my camera with me, because obviously we did the video, but we never filmed the car out and about. So he's coming back on either Monday or Tuesday, we're going to fit the trumpets and the air filter, and... Um, if he's in the mood, the weather's nice, I'm in the mood, I'm going to get the camera and we're going to go for a little spin in the Fiesta. Uh, he was very pleased with the performance. I thought it went really well and uh, with an upgrade, we did an upgrade on that yesterday. Uh, yeah, thanks mate. Okay. Right. Hello to Com from Canada. All the way from Canada. Must be morning there. Uh, I'm going to turn this so you can see my face. There's no point just uh, anyway. Okay, let's have a look. That's Mark One Fiesta XR2 Park Nest. It's a Mark One Fiesta. I don't think it's an XR2. It might be now with all the spec he's got on it, but. Uh, It did sound good, mate. He's got a pretty uh, effective exhaust on it, though. Um, but you can feel it, hear it. The engine is very free, free revving. Yeah, they do make a nice noise. All right, guys, I'm done. Um, Yeah, man, I'll, I'll, I'll do another vid when I've rebuilt them. A shorter one, and maybe not a live. Be nice to have a live one uh, with a bit more sort of, I don't know, interaction. All right, then, guys, we say goodbye to each other now because I'm going to close off. Thank you very much for watching, and thanks for the thumbs up. And uh, I was, what's that, 14.45? Someone been putting money on this or something? <laughs> Never mind. All right then, guys. It's Coast. Thanks a lot, Ali. John Ladd, Park Nest. Kevin McLaughlin. Good night, man. See you later, Nick. Well, slow down, man. See you later, Colm. East Coast, Ron. Trees. <laughs> All right then, guys. I will see you soon. Got another video blending in the computer in there. And it's got the only tiny little footage of dude stock, right? It only lasts about three seconds, but I've put it in. Um, unfortunately, it's a very short video, but it kind of captures a little bit of what happened on Dude Stock, which was just a chill day, really, with cars and food. Anyway, God bless you guys. Have a lovely Saturday or Sunday, wherever you are, and uh, thank you. And uh, yeah, bye. See you. Sweet.